What's up, everybody? Thralls Metal here once again. I'm Necroc Nick. I'm Jam and John. And we have yet another album review for you. We're doing Who fucking knew? five this time because there's been Whew. so much ridiculous shit. And we're even still missing some stuff, too. Yep. But we just don't have time to do it because next week is coming and there's a bunch of shit right, next and week. The, and I just looked at the calendar for next week uh, while we were in the other room <laughs> and there's like nine things on it. Yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, so... Needless to say, we got more work to do, but we definitely wanted to go over at least one more in here, and we decided to go over some filthy underground stuff with the newest offering from Mortuous, Upon Desolation. This also comes out on the 16th of September on Carbonized Records. This band formed in 2009 in San Jose, California. This is their second full length. I actually became a fan of them with their first album, Through Wilderness, which I thought was really fucking solid. And for those who don't know, this is just gross old school death metal just uh filthy sounding like riffy as hell yes. very much latched to an early 90s sound and it actually features current and former members of bands like vastum uh acephalics necrot and even exhumed so good pedigree and we would have actually seen these guys uh, a little while ago with left to die but there was a giant power outage in detroit and Yep. Well, that, was that the, didn't happen. It was the shittiest thing I've ever been to. In uh, all the years I've been going to shows, never once have I been to a show that didn't happen because the venue was out of power. Now, on the upside, we did get to hang out with you know our homies in Skeletal Remains. And, um, Matt you know, Harvey. Matt Harvey, yep. And they even let us in the building, and I bought a shirt directly from Mortuous. So. Actually, Mortuous came out and uh, BS with us, too. Yep, uh, yep. I mean, what else was anyone going to do? We were all just standing in line. But needless to say, we wanted to go over this one mainly because we did miss them live. And, well, we like gross death metal. I don't know if you know that about us yet. Have you guys picked up on that? I don't know if you have. Um, Subtle. I mean, you know, I know we try to keep it really quiet here as to what our likes are. Obviously, it's not death metal. We don't ever go to death metal shows or review death metal bands or, you know, death festivals. I just got this hat because it fits. Yeah. Yeah. It's a total fashion statement. It too. is. The record opens up with the song Carve, and just immediately you're slammed in the face with Morbid Angel. Yeah. Um, Blessed are the Sick Era, Morbid Angel, a little bit of Gateways to Annihilation, but it's that kind of like production on the whole. Just nasty fucking ambient dissonant guitars, just like I like. Very um, chunky tone. Yep. Dark, cavernous. Filthy, like the strings are covered in snot. Yeah, or like uh, or entrails, bile. What I noticed right away was definitely that, you know, early 90s sound. Like again, Morbid Angel. Specifically, I heard like Blessed Are the Sick just because it felt like those Morbid Angel riffs you would still hear on Altars, but with that more sludgy tone that you would hear on Blessed. And definitely immolation in terms of the weird crawling mm -hmm. tonal riffs and little like, you know, pinch harmonics kind of scattered in there. And it, that blast beat that Immolation uses. Oh yeah. Not like a gravity blast, not like super fast, but just like that, that stick in it. Yeah, you'll That's know it. when you yeah. hear it. Yep. Even the vocals, like definitely kind of in the realm of Ross Dolan, but there's more like gurgle and rot behind them. Like they sound a little bit more uh, decrepit. Like, you know, it's like literally a zombie sort of just doing them. Very effective. And this whole vibe is captured really well by the production here. The production was actually done by Greg Wilkerson, who's actually the bassist of Autopsy. So that kind of makes sense because, I mean, if you listen to Autopsy, you're going to hear a lot of the same sort of, like, vibe. Like, maybe not the same riffs. I would say this is definitely more technical. Yes. But in terms of, like, the whole atmosphere and vibe of it and the sound of the guitars being kind of just dirty sounding, very... Similar to Autopsy. Something that kind of stands out a little bit are in, in a lot of these songs, it will just kind of out of nowhere switch from something really fast and aggressive into straight incantation y death doom. I mean, it was something I picked out right away, just, you know, the stop on a dime, mm -hmm. like you're doing the apocalyptic riffing, very atonal, very evil sounding. Like there's yes. a lot of riffs yes. in here that just flat out sound evil. And then slowing down to single droning chugs with a very eerie, creepy melody of them and just making it as just dark and doomy as possible. Like the end of Days of Grey. That yeah. one stands out a whole lot. That one has this really kind of odd, eerie melody to it. Just a giant, giant, filthy doom breakdown. And it is. It is just like single notes. Just... Bong, ka. But they even go like a little bit more like gothic occasionally too in terms of the death doom breaks like stuff that kind of harks back to like early paradise lost and 
definitely some early My Dying Bride. Defiled by Fire has a very creepy Death Doom break, but they incorporate a violin in there doing these very haunting melodies. And there's like a level of distortion on it. It doesn't necessarily sound like it's just a flat out like acoustic violin. It's it doesn't right away. The more it goes on, the more you can tell what it is, but initially it just sounds like creepy strings of some sort. Yeah, and it's very effective. It kind of gives it that sort of gothic kind of classical vibe. And even on Metamorphosis, just the clean melodies that are on top of the droning Death Doom chugs, like that kind of harks back to like those early Death Doom bands that were just, you know, uh, making sure sadness was refined and, you know, delivered to you so you could be bummed out for long periods of time because the songs are long. Not so much on this, but definitely those albums. Another thing I like about this band too is that every time they go into a, to, to transition either into doom or out of it or like into a breakdown or something, they like to isolate the instruments to do it. Instead of having everybody participate in the transition, they'll isolate the bass for a second. Um, and it'll be this weird kind of like upper pitch atonal thing or they'll isolate just the drums, or they'll isolate the bass and the drums together. Kind of an odd way to do transitions, but it works. Yeah, and I mean, when things are all going at once on here, especially when everything's being like very atonal and dissonant, it can be a wall of sound. Like you have the low gurgles, you can kind of make out the sludgy bass, like the guitars are kind of way out in front, but you know, two guitars going back and forth in terms of like delivering just these thick gnarly fucking riffs and then the drums just absolutely pummeling you and doing quick on the dime fucking you know transitions it can be a little bit much sometimes so hearing that isolation sometimes mm -hmm. is you know kind of a nice little breather yep a good way to kind of break up the yeah yeah breathe breathe a little bit and this album kind of varies up the tempo pretty well like you get fast thrashy sections straight up blast beats and a lot of nasty groovy sections that you know just kind of have like a good riff behind them so you can just headbang to but there is sort of an issue on here and it's kind of across most of the album is this is such a transition happy album that it is hard to keep up with many 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 riffs now before I get into that gripe, I want to say that the many, many, many riffs, and I'm talking like there's probably like a good hundred riffs on here, they're all good. Yeah. But they don't stick around long enough at all. Like some of these riffs are only good for maybe a measure or two, and then that's it. That's all you get of that riff. Yeah, there's not a lot of like repeating riffs, especially early on. One song in particular that stood out to me was Burning Still. I think it's one of the shorter tracks in here. Like it's a little bit over three minutes. Mm -hmm. I think that's the one. Mm -hmm. There were like 10, 11 riff changes in that three minute song. And I don't think many of them repeated. So this was kind of like difficult to listen to at points because there's not a lot of stuff coming back and mm -hmm. revisiting riffs. Mm -hmm. We're building upon them and like, no, it's on to the next riff. And granted, the riffs are fucking awesome. Like they, again, emulate bands that I absolutely fucking love. Exactly. But they happen so quickly that it doesn't give these riffs much of a chance to sink in. Like as soon as I kind of get the whole meter and the rhythm and the hook in it, it's on to the next one. And like they straight up changed the riff. It wasn't like it wasn't like they started a riff and then they built it on it and still left pieces of the old one there. Like it didn't. It just completely changed. I mean that's cool because they were all great riffs, but it it, it made it kind of hard to latch onto some things which was unfortunate because there are many good qualities about this album. And like rhythmically, it's interesting because you would hear like the same rhythms sort of pop up. So mm -hmm. you'd figure, all right, hey, that's gonna bring back that riff, that certain hook, and now it'd be like uh, a similar riff maybe, but you know, it, it wouldn't be that same one. Again, that's another riff that was like, all right, let's see if this one hangs out for a while. Honestly, it wasn't until the end of the album around Ash and Dismay and Graveyard Rain where they had some sections that really kind of opened up. Mm -hmm. They let them mm -hmm. breathe, they stuck around for more than a couple of measures, and they were the most melodic moments on yes. the entire album. These very sullen, dreary Death Doom breaks with some beautiful melodies on them. Like, I was really like, shocked. In Ash and Dismay. Yeah, Ash and yeah. Dismay. Gorgeous. It has this very, like, you know, dissonant but very pretty melody to it, and because that moment is there, because the beginning of the song starts off kind of in typical fashion for this band yeah. where it's you know, groove, riff, blast beats, you know, like a lot of just like chaotic heavy shit 
it's all really good. But then you get to this section, I was like, all right, this is hanging out for a while, and they're building on top of it. Yeah, yeah, and it made it more memorable because, like, up until those two, the the parts in these last songs, it's almost like you've heard each of these songs before in the same structure, in the same pattern, in the same thousand riffs. For me, it was cool to latch on to these moments here in the in the last couple songs. But like it also would have been cooler to have other moments to latch on to in the six songs that preceded those. And that is sort of like uh, indicative of an issue with pacing here. There aren't songs that necessarily stand out from one another. Like there isn't one that is, you know, decidedly more fast yep. than others. There's not one that is decidedly more groove laden or slower or doomy. They're all sort of a mix. Like this album kind of feels like they want to play to every death metal style and death metal trope in every song. And granted, that's ambitious, and there's a lot of things to pivot back and forth between, mm -hmm. but it kind of comes across as like a little bit messy, and it hurts the flow of the album because there's not even like atmosphere to separate the songs. Right. It's right into the next one, and inevitably all of them kind of end up sounding kind of the same. What I will give them is a thumbs up on the fact that there are no interludes on this. They Fuck don't. No. They don't waste any time. There's no samples. There's no guy sounding like he's getting bludgeoned in an alley. I like, mean, they could have helped. I mean, they could. I mean, yeah, but it didn't exist at all on the record. I'll give you a thumbs up for that. You didn't waste any time. No. No, this, I mean, this runs a tight 37 minutes and uh, some seconds. And, I mean, you are bludgeoned from start to finish. Mm -hmm. Like, the last couple of tracks give you a little bit of, like, you know, breathing room to actually kind of take in the misery but melody in those yep. breakdowns. But yep. the rest of the time, it is just a bullet train of brutality and I mean it's all well executed it's just kind of coming at you at such a high fire rate this is like trying to catch machine gun bullets in the air <laughs> oh, <yeah. It's, laughs> no, I, no. Uh, you're, you're just you're just gonna get shot the fact that it's unpredictable in a way just because some of the transitions kind of come out of nowhere mm -hmm. but at the same time when they do transition it's a very familiar style and sound that I still love like you know there's a ton of bands we listen to that definitely ape you know death metal I've heard before but it comes mm -hmm. down to the execution and you can kind of hear their passion for it in here it's just how it's assembled like man it happens too quickly like the big thing in here is let some of these songs breathe I wouldn't even care if they were longer yeah if you yeah. stretched them out yeah. just so I get a few more measures so I can actually kind of sink into the moment that'd be awesome yep but overall I did enjoy this. It's just, again, uh, a cacophony of just maddening, apocalyptic riffing and brutality, which generally isn't much of a complaint, but when it's done too much, I guess it is. Yeah. So overall, I'm going to give this three stars. I still dig it. I still ordered it. I still really dig this band. It's just less is more. Like, don't be in a hurry to get to the next riff so quickly. Let some of these fucking filthy riffs breathe because they're fucking filthy. They mm -hmm. are catchy. Mm -hmm. They're disgusting. Mm -hmm. I just want to hear them go on a little bit more. Build on them instead. Just, you know, don't be in a rush because you guys have the fucking riffs. There's a ton of fucking talent in this band. It's more than apparent. It's just stitching these songs together a little bit better. I want to hear more of what I heard in the last two tracks, especially. Like, yeah. those hard transitions work there because you let each moment breathe out a little bit. And then when it came back to the heavier, faster stuff, it sounded fresh and new again. If you're big on bands like, again, Incantation, Immolation, Morbid Angel, I would even say Drawn and Quartered, definitely check this band out. Check out their first album, too. I really enjoy that one. But the important part is, check this band out. It's also a three for me. The bands that this band is attempting to emulate, they're doing wonderful at. I'm I'm a giant fan of, you know, Incantation, Immolation, Morbid Angel, Drawn and Quartered, insert name here. What's lacking in here, I think, for most of these songs, excluding the last two, is some dynamic. There's riff after riff after riff after riff, which is great if you you at least let the, the listener latch on to at least one or two of them. There's so much going on, you can't really get yourself honed in on a lot of it. I mean, other than that, it was a good record. I had fun. I enjoyed this. This is like the sixth time today I've heard this album. But yeah, I mean, overall, it, it's still a three. I really dig this band. I really like these guys. And definitely, you know, like Nick said, I, I ordered it. I, I have a shirt. You know, go out and support the band, man. Fucking, yeah. You'll see them live. You'll see them live. Maybe you'll even see them in a venue yeah. where the power's on. So, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, subscribe, because we do stuff like this all, all the, the time. time. We are also on Patreon. If you'd like to help us out there, there's a link down below to thrallsmetal.com. 
Our Patreon link is there. There's also, you know, stuff to check out, like T-shirts. We will have new merch eventually. New. Just sort of figuring out what we're going to do. We but might even get grenades. Grenades. You know. I see, you see the guy's going to have to let me get the grenades. It's going to be fun. We're going to have fun testing them at least. Probably in an abandoned warehouse or... In your backyard. You're getting a, no, you're, you're getting a fucking pool. No, because the Surprise. police station's not that far away. Oh, I know it's not. Uh, as for other news, uh, of course, a ton of reviews coming. Pantera, all ready to go. It will be up on Wednesday, so we're looking forward to finally showing that one off and uh, moving on to the next one finally because it kind of took a while for us to get that yep. one together. And I'm already working on Mastodon. I mean, I've already listened to those albums more time than I care to comment on. Same. I think he has too, so I don't think it'll be too much longer before Mastodon rears its uh, giant head. Giant head. Gigantic head. With tusks. Yep. And of course, thank you all so thank much you. for liking, subscribing, following. Means the fucking world to us. It keeps us going. We look forward to putting out more content. There's a lot of stuff we want to cover, and mm -hmm. we're gonna attempt to do it. I don't know how well we're doing, but uh, you'll see you when know we do. You know what's interesting is out of all the videos we've done, we still haven't even really scraped the surface, which is fucking crazy. Because uh, we've done what a thousand videos and some change, and there's ten thousand albums in that other room. So yeah, we uh, have a lot more coming. Yeah. So yeah, always stuff to stay tuned for. And once again, I'm going to thank you because that's what I do in this part of the thank video. You. And we will catch you later.